Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. With respect to Indira Gandhi Peace Prize, which of the following statements is our correct? It is a prestigious award given by Indira Gandhi Memorial Trust. It is awarded to individuals or organizations to honor their efforts in promoting international peace, development and a new international economic order. The recipients can be national and international nominees. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of Indira Gandhi Peace Prize. Let us try and understand what are these options. When it comes to the first option, it is right because it is a prestigious award given by the Indira Gandhi Memorial Trust. The second option is also right as it is awarded both to the individuals as well as to the organizations. So those individuals or organizations who are able to contribute to the peace, who are able to expose the very fundamentals of development of peace, such individuals and organizations would be provided Indira Gandhi Peace Prize. Do remember, such organizations or individuals who have been supporting scientific temperament, who have been helping in scientific discoveries which help for the benefit of the humanity and which enlarges the scope of freedom, such individuals and organizations are also given this award. The third statement is also right as the individuals and organizations can be national or the international nominees which means it can be Indians or it can also be organizations not from India that is from a foreign country or an international organization and at the same time the individuals can be people from India and also from other countries who are exposing the very value of promoting international peace and development. For the year 2021, we have Pratham, which happens to be a civil society organization which is able to dedicate itself to the cause of developing education in India has been given this particular award. So improving the quality of education is one of the fundamental objectives of this organization, which is why for the year 2021, they have been given the Indira Gandhi Peace Prize. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following are the surface-to-surface -surface missiles? We have Prahar, Prithvi, Shaurya, Spider, Trishul. The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of surface-to-surface -surface missile. It also makes a mention of surface-to-air missile. The example for surface-to-surface -surface missile happens to be Brahmos. The example for surface-to-air missile happens to be Barak 8. What is this surface-to-surface -surface missile? Let's assume there is a land station which is a missile which is launched from the land. Then this missile can also be launched from the sea as well. So what is a surface to surface missile? It is launched from the land and it will fall on the land. It can be launched from the sea. It can fall on its target which is another sea area. So when it is launched from the land or from the sea from the surface to another surface target that is what is called a surface to surface missile. Then we also have surface to air missile. What happens? The missile is launched from the land or the sea but then there is a target missile which is in the air which means it can be a flight it can be a jet or it can be any other equipment like a drone and that is what is called a surface to air missile so the missile which is launched from surface and is hitting a target on the surface is the surface to surface missile when a missile is launched from the surface and hits a target in the air that is called a surface to air missile. So which are the surface to surface missiles that India has? As part of example, we can take Prithvi series of missile, Agni series of missile, Nirbhai, Brahmos, Prahar, these are all surface to surface missiles that India has. When we look into the last two options, Spider and Trishul happen to be surface to air missiles. Added to these two, what we also have is Barak 8, which happens to be a surface to the air missiles. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following exercises is are correctly matched? Shakti, India France, Dharma Guardian, India Indonesia, Surya Kiran, India Nepal, Sampriti, India Bangladesh. Which of them are correctly matched? The answer to this is 1, 3 and 4 only. 
Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the PIB makes a mention of exercise Shakti. When we look into the first one, Shakti, yes, it is an exercise between India and France. Dharma Guardian is wrong because it is not with Indonesia, but instead it is with Japan. Surya Kiran, yes, it is right. It is with India and Nepal. And Sampriti is with India and Bangladesh. Then there are other set of exercises as well, which includes Mitra Shakti between India and Sri Lanka, Maitri between India and Thailand, Vajra Prahar, India and USA, Nomadic Elephant, India and Mongolia, Garuda Shakti happens to be India and Indonesia, Dharma Guardian, India and Japan, Surya Kiran, India and Nepal, Simbex, India and Singapore, and finally we have Corporate, which happens to be an exercise between India and Thailand. Now let's look into the next practice question. With reference to use of nanotechnology in health sector, which of the following statements is are correct? Nanoparticles can be used for drug delivery to the brain for therapeutic treatment of neurological disorders. Nanoflares can be used for detection of cancer cells in the bloodstream. Nanochips can be used to check plague in arteries. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference in the PIB article. When it comes to nanotechnology, it can be used in healthcare and medicine. It can be used in energy. It can be used in agriculture and food as well. In the medical world, nanotechnology is a boon to all of us. Why? Because it is able to create many things which was not traditionally present in the traditional medicine. So it has given us an advantage where people would be able to recover faster without much side effects which was seen in the traditional system of healthcare. What are the applications of nanotechnology? Nanotech detectors for heart attack, nanochips to check plague in arteries, nano carriers for eye surgery and chemotherapy, diabetic patch for regulating blood sugar levels, nanoparticles for drug delivery to the brain for therapeutic treatment of neurological disorders. Then we have nano sponges which are polymer nanoparticles coated with a red blood cell membrane which can be used for absorbing toxins and removing them from the bloodstream. Nanoflares can be used for detection of cancer cells in the bloodstream and nanopores used in the making of DNA sequencing more efficient. These are some of the applications of the nanotechnology when it comes to the medical world. They further are used in the energy sector, they are used in the agriculture and the food sector as well. So there are multiple uses when it comes to the nanotechnology applications. Now let's look into the next practice question. Due to some reasons, if there is a huge fall in the population of species of butterflies, what could be its likely consequence or consequences? Pollination of some plants could be adversely affected. There could be a drastic increase in the fungal infections of some cultivated plants. It could lead to a fall in the population of some species of wasps, spiders and birds. Select the correct answer using the code given below. The answer to this is 1 and 3 only. Why? That is because the minute the population of the butterflies are reduced, what would happen? They play a significant role in the pollination of plants and production of crops. So when there is drop of butterflies, yes, pollination of some plants could be adversely affected. This is the right statement. The third statement is also right. Why? Because there are few birds which also have predatory practices on the butterflies. They prey on these butterflies as well. So if their numbers drop, it could lead to fall in the population of some species like was spiders as well as birds. When it comes to the second statement, there is no conclusive evidence that if there is a drop in butterflies, this could increase the fungal infections of some cultivated plants. Since we do not have the conclusive evidence, the answer to this would be 1 and 3 only. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is World Fisheries Day. The World Fisheries Day is celebrated every year annually on 21st of November. So this can be very important from the preliminary examination point of view. What are the objectives of celebrating World Fisheries Day? There are twofold objectives. One is to keep the healthy ecosystem when it comes to the oceans and at the same time there is sustainable usage of the fish. 
ambitious as well. So what are the objectives? One is to highlight the importance of sustainable stock of the fisheries and also the necessity to maintain the healthy ecosystem of the fishing sector in the oceans. What is the significance of the fishery stay? What happens when it comes to fishing? There are multiple people who are integrated. You have the fishing community. You also have the logistics community. You also have people who consume on it. So there are large number of people who are integrated in this process. So making sure that all these processes, all these people come on a platform so that there is creation of awareness about the sustainability of the fishing sector is one of the major significance of this World Fisheries Day. So creating an awareness, setting future goals and creating milestones for the trading of the fishing community is the significance of the World Fisheries Day. Added to this, there are allied units of the fisheries. They are all bought under one roof, not just the fishing department, but multiple other departments are brought into picture so that they can expand on the employment opportunities. Further, the fishing sector is also plagued by multiple issues. This is in the form of environmental pollution. This is in the form of plastic encroachment. This is in the form of oil spills and pollution in the marine bodies. This is in the form of overgrowth of blue, green and other algae as well. So in all these cases, what we see is drop in the fishing opportunities. So creating an awareness and ensuring that toxic chemicals do not enter the oceanic water is the significant factor of the World Fisheries Day. If we have to look into the statistics with respect to the fishing sector, India is leading fish producing country and second major producer of fish through aquaculture in the world. Fisheries sector in India provides direct employment to about 28 million fishers. India contributes about 7.7% to the global fish production and ranks fourth in the global exports of fish products according to 2020 statistics. How is the fishing structure in in India. When it comes to the fishing management structure, we have to remember it can be broken down into control made by the state government and the control made by the central government. When it comes to inland fisheries, they are entirely managed by the state government. What are these inland fisheries? Let's say the catch of the fish by the people in the lakes or in the rivers such is managed by the state government. Then we have the states and the union territories which develop and regulate seawater fisheries inside 12 nautical miles. So within 12 nautical miles, they also regulate as well. But beyond 12 nautical miles and up to 200 nautical miles, it is the union government which is responsible for the fisheries. Do remember, fisheries is a state subject. States play a major role in managing and promoting this particular sector. But beyond 12 nautical miles, up until 200 nautical miles, it is the union government or the central government. So what are the initiatives taken by the government? We have the government which has infused as much as 20,000 crores into Matsya Sampada Yojana. Seaweed farming is also emphasized by the government. The government is also focusing on empowering the women increasing their entrepreneurship skills so that this farming sector can also empower the women. It is this that we have to understand in reference to this fact of the day. This is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.